Yo, what's up guys? I'm Yannick from the Produce School and in this video, I'm going to make a future race track from scratch within an hour. I'm going over all sorts of things like arrangement, sound selection, mixing and more. Let's see how this goes and start creating a future rave track. All the samples, presets, vocals and more that I'm using in this video come from our latest pack called Intensity, which is the ultimate future rave producer pack containing serum presets, project files, samples, vocals and more. And if you want to check it out, click the link over here or use the link in the description, which goes to our website, theproducerschool.com. And we also have a lot of other cool sample packs out there, as well as some free ones. All right, I opened up a brand new FL Studio project, which is just my basic template with an init preset in Serum, the BPM at 128. Um, and let's just start with an ID. I want to start with a melody and the leads. And for that, I'm going to select a preset from our Impulse Sound Bank. Um, let's look for a nice one. This one will definitely work for a future rave. That can already work, actually. Let's just first start with a rhythm. Um, let's go with A sharp. Let's lower down the volume a little bit of this one. And now that I have this basic rhythm, I'm going to start changing up the notes. Um, I think I just played something like this. So C sharp, um, and let's put this one up maybe. Let's just go for something really simple like this. So, um, typical future rave. Let's make these notes a little bit longer. This one as well. Let's copy this and add something extra to that at the end of the second bar. Maybe go down. And let's copy this once again, and then at the end of the fourth bar, I'm going up, I think, or down. I think this can work. Now let's just go with this F. Um, let's leave it like that for now and let's add another layer. I actually like this first sound already, so let's leave that like that. Um, let's look for another lead in the impulse sound bank. This one is pretty cool, let's remove the reverb. And I think I want to keep the delay on there. It's this really nice like slap delay, really short. Definitely add something to the lead. And what I'm doing right now is to find the right balance between these two leads by like sliding the channel volumes up and down. 
Um, and in that way, I can find the right balance between the volumes of these two leads. Let's put these two leads in a mixer bus like this. Hit Control L. And now they're in there. Let's lower down the volume already. Let's put both of them in a bus by selecting route this track only. And then let's just rename it to be a little bit like organized, which I'm usually not. Let's start with this first lead. I'm going to add an EQ to this um, and add like a low cut. Like that. Um, let's slam a camel crusher on there. I think this British Clean preset is the most used preset in Camel Crusher. Um, it just adds a little bit of compression and distortion and makes it sound a little bit more like fat. Sounds great. Um, let's go on to the next lead. Let's first start with a low cut. And let's add another EQ to make some other changes to the sound. I think there's a frequency over here. It's a little bit too loud. Duck it in like that and boost some high end. Let's tweak this first preset a little bit. Let's add a little bit more white noise by starting up the level of the noise section. And make it a little bit shorter with the decay. Then I'm going to add some effects on the bus. Um, first of all, I'm gonna put an OTT on there, which is a trick I saw at a video from David Guetta, where he's making a future race track and he just slams an OTT on the leads. Um, in the future wave, there is a lot of multi-band compression used, so let's put this on there as well. Just start with a low depth level. Something like that will do. Now let's add a reverb on there, just a short one to give it some nice room. Always make sure to cut out the low frequencies of your reverb. Future Rave is also known for that really big sidechain reverb on the leads. And that's an effect that I'm going to make right now as well. Let's first open up a reverb and a P controller, which makes sure we can sidechain the reverb. Um, let's first set up the reverb with a really big space, a low cut. Something like that. And now I'm going to control the wet level of this reverb with the peak controller. So hit peak, then invert it, and then hit accept. And now you can see that this button will move whenever the notes are playing. However, that's a bit too much, so we have to tweak some settings within the peak controller.
That sounds great. And now let's just add a kickstart for sidechain. Like that. Let's put this in the playlist to get this ID going. And let's add a kick from the intensity sample pack. Look for one. This one sounds great. Let's put it in there. Paint it like this. I think there's a little bit too much high end in the kick. So I'm going to EQ it just to remove some uh, high frequencies. Like this frequency over here. Makes a little bit of a difference. And I usually like to keep my kick at around minus 6 dB. Um, it really depends on the track though, but usually it's around minus 6 dB. Now that we have the leads and this kick ready, uh, let's start working on the bass. Let's go into this pattern and add another instance of Serum. Let's go with a nice bass preset. I think um, bass kick is nice. And this will just be a mid bass. Underneath it, I'm going to add a sub bass and maybe another layer. Um, but let's start with this bass first. For future wave, you can just use the same rhythm as the leads or you can change it up but for now it's just really easy to use the same rhythm as the leads have so let's start on this note and let's remake this rhythm That sounds great. Um, now let's add a sub bass. We have a preset for that as well, which is called, I think, low. This one, right? And let's first change this up. Let's copy this into the sub bass and lower it down one octave. Oh no, that's a bit too low. That's a little bit better. The sub bass right now sounds a little bit like too long. So what I want to do is shorten it by lowering down the sustain and the decay as well. To get this more like plucky bass sound. Like that. Let's put these two into a new pattern so we have them separate from the leads, like this. Uh, let's put them in a mixer channel and link them to a bus, the same like we did with the leads. So we can put like different effects on there. Um, let's name this bass bus. Color it with a nice orange color. Let's first start with this mid bass, remove the low frequencies, because it's the mid bass and you don't want any lows to be in there. Let's add a camel crusher for you know, distortion and compression. Lower down the volume. And now let's mix sub bass. The only thing I'm going to do for that is remove the high frequencies. We have only like the really, really low bass sound. Like that. And now let's go to the bus and add a kickstart on it for sidechain. Let's 
Let's see how that sounds together with the lead and the kick. I have to unmute them. Sounds pretty great already. I think there's something missing in the bass, so I'm going to add another layer to it. Um, and let's look for a nice preset that we can utilize in there. Um, let me just put this right here. Maybe if we like shorten this. Let's move to another preset. I think if we can filter this one down with an envelope on the cutoff, it can be cool. So right it to here, put it like so. Let's see how that sounds together with the other basses. Definitely add something to the bass. So I want to use this one and mix this a little bit. Um, let's remove the low frequencies that we have in the sub bass. Let's add some distortion with Camel Crusher to bring back some of the harmonics. Let's Turn off the compressor for now. That sounds great. Just low in volume. And we have to route it to um, the bass bus again. You can definitely hear when I mute it or unmute it that it's adding something to this bass. So that's great. And together with the leads. Perfect. Um, I think we can start building drop around this ID. Um, let's put it at a nice time, like 37 seconds or something, because the breakdowns or intros are not that long within Future Wave. They usually have a drop hitting at like 30 seconds or something. Let's start working on the drums. Um, let's add a clap loop or something underneath the kick to fill up some space. This one can work. It's already at the right BPM, so that's great. Let's add something like a thumb underneath this. This one maybe. To get some more groove in the track. Maybe add another thumb for some variation.
make it a bit shorter. This is really soft and subtle in the background. I think the volume of this one can be a little bit lower. And let's add some reverb to both of them to give them a little bit more room. Just a fruity reverb will do, I think. like this. Now let's add some effects like a downlifter. This one will work I think. And let's add some sides into it with a kickstart once again. Put it like this and I think that sounds great for now. And then remove the kick here. And then we need something like a drum fill to make transition between the first and the second part of the drop. Uh, let's copy this as well. And then we have the basic ID of the drop. And then I want something like a reese fill and a drum fill over here. Then we can start working on the second part of the drop. Um, this transition is something I'm going to do later on. Um, for the second part of the drop, I want to go with a different melody maybe. Copy it and make it unique. And let's see what we can do. That can work, I think. I'm just trying to find the right notes. Nothing really special. Um, just trying to hear the, like, the melody in my head. That can definitely work, I think. Um, let's paste it into the other lead. And let's see how that sounds together with the bass. Definitely a cool variant on the other melody I had in the first part of the drop. I think it's already pretty solid for the first or the second part of the drop. 
However, to make some things a little bit more interesting, I want to add some other things like a synth step maybe. Um, let's see, we have some synth shots in the pack. Maybe this one can work if we like pitch it right. So I think we're in A sharp or B flat. Um, we have to lower down U from C like this. Maybe let's go another octave down. That's pretty bad right now, but I think we can turn this into something cool with some work on the mixing. Maybe let's use... That sounds a little bit better. It's a little more dark than the other one. But... We need to mix it for sure. On its own, it sounds pretty horrible, but together with the other elements of the track, it sounds great. Let's boost a lot of the high end. Maybe slap an OTT on there. Because you know, it's future rave. <laughs> And now that needs some reverb and sidechain. So let's start with the reverb. Pick one. And then the reverb. Let's see how that sounds. Try to layer it with the other one, other synth shot I already had. This one, and then this one can serve as a higher layer. That's this preset. We have to pitch it down, I think. And route it to the same uh, mixer channel as the other one. Or the other way around. It can just be in the background of the track, it doesn't have to be like really crazy this step. So I think that's good for now. Uh, let me just switch on Smart Disable right here. Um, now I want to add a drum loop. 
so maybe a Hyatt loop or something. This one works for sure. Let's stretch it to the right tempo. Maybe that loop as well. A more like shaker thing. Put this down one second. Stretch it to the right BPM. And let's add some sidechain uh, to this. Like that. Maybe we can add a clap, I'm not sure if that will work, but let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that might work. And let's leave it like that for now. Um, <clears throat> now I want to add like the transition part with an uplifter. This one maybe works. So right here, between the first and second part of the drop. Or maybe this one. Already sounding pretty good. Um, let's add a short fill. This one maybe, just to keep it nice and simple. And now let's add a Reese bass to get this like typical Reese bass fill, um, which I will show you right now. Go for a nice preset. Can work. Maybe this research is a little bit too like harsh. And then it should stop right here, I think. Like that, um, we can make this a little bit more interesting by automating some things like the low cut, for instance. Put this in a mixer channel, add a low cut on EQ. Create automation clip.
Another thing we can do is creating a panning automation with Fruity Panomatic. Let's see how that sounds. Like that. So you have this like pen thing going on. Really hard to explain. And let's create an automation <clears throat> for the amount as well. Like that. Put this down there. We have some space on the top. Let's try and add this other fill. Like that, I think that's pretty solid for the drop right now. Um, let's start and work on the break and the build up because that's also something I need to do. Um, let's start with a new pattern. And I want to use a Reese base, but a different one than I just uh, used. So let's see that which preset I'm going to use. This one will do, and let's create a nice pattern for this. Just sustaining on the key or the root note of the track. This will work, I think. Let's put it in there. I'm just going for a really short break because most of these future rave tracks also have a really short break and just go straight into the build up. So you have that momentum going on. Let's add this downlifter in here as well, make it unique, and then we can remove the effects. Let's also add an impact. This one maybe. I want to add a vocal on top of this and um, we have some vocals in the intensity pack which you can use in all your tracks it's 100% royalty free and this everything this one is in the right key so let's put it in there everything has changed tonight everything has changed tonight And then it goes straight into the build up. Um, 
let's add some effects to this vocal. I'm not going really crazy with this and everything on the mixing because like I have to do it in about one hour. Um, so let's see. Everything has changed tonight. Let's add a fruity delay uh, before the reverb. And I'm going to control that with P controller when I have to set up. Everything has changed. Let's select a bandpass uh, feedback. Everything has changed. And let's um, control this wet level with a P controller, which I'm going to add right now. Link to controller, then peak for this one or th this one, and then invert it. Then you get something like this. Everything has changed tonight. Everything has changed tonight. Everything has changed. Everything has changed tonight. Let's add this Reese bass to a mixer channel so we can see what's going on. Everything has changed. Let's add an EQ so we can automate the low frequencies of this bass. Everything has changed tonight. Like this. Tonight, tonight. And then the lead should start and then there's a build up coming. Um, however, I want to automate the cutoff frequency of this bass. So you have a little bit more movement going on. Let's see how we can make that sound great. Every Everything has changed tonight. Everything has changed tonight. And let's add a reverb so you can hear this like sweep better than right now. Everything has changed. Everything Let's add another impact for some like dramatic effect. And then the build-up should start. Let's add a drum loop from the drop to the breakdown. Everything has changed. Maybe this one. Tonight. Everything has changed. Tonight. Just lower the volume down so it's in the background of the track. Everything has changed. Maybe the other one works better. Everything has changed. Tonight. Everything has changed tonight. And then start with the leads over here. Without the kickstart. So people know that there's something coming. Um, let's automate this kickstart right here. And then cut it off here so we can have a fill or something else there. Let's 
I'm going to select a different sidechain uh, shape on the base because I think it's a little bit clashing too much. So it's a little bit like shorter. And then at this uplifter here, so people know that the build up is coming. Let's add an EQ to automate the low or high frequencies. Something like that. Um, we can also add the plugin called Endless Small, which is perfect for creating buildups. It's this one, I think. Maybe a little bit too sharp right now. Um, let's first add some uplifters and things like that. Little glitchy, um, let's add this fill here just before the drop hits. Maybe cut it like this, not sure if that sounds great. That's a little bit better. Let's move this one on there as well. A little bit messy, but I don't have a lot of time. Everything has changed. Um, I forget where I was going with, I think, oh yeah, the build up. Add some risers. This one is pretty clean. And I want to automate something on the lead. I think I'm going to use that filter and the end of small. So right now I'm going to automate the high frequencies. So we have created a low pass automation. And then the end of small. Create automation clip for that. And I wanted to have, and I wanted to start something over here. Then create an automation of the fruity balance, which controls um, the level or the gain of this chain. It's over here. Really messy, but I don't care. Let's make it go down like this. Let's move all these automations 
to the bottom of the project so I don't have them there. Um, to spice some things up, I'm going to add a drum loop or a clap loop. Make the build up a little bit more intense. This one sounds great. Put it in there, it's already in the right BPM. Oh yeah, and of course, I can't forget to add a long fill, like a snare fill. So this one should be in there, of course. Otherwise, it's not an EDM build-up. Let's change this filter a little bit. I want to add another layer to the vocal, maybe pitch it up one octave so you get this chipmunk vocal, um, just really low in volume. Everything has changed. Everything has and FL Studio has a new function which is a stretch pro where you can change the format of the vocal. Everything has changed. This is just to add another layer to the vocal. Doesn't do anything crazy, but add something. Everything has changed tonight. Everything has changed tonight. Now I have to fill in a few more samples, like at the end of the drop, this impact that should be there. Create some space over here just to give it a nice um, ending. And maybe extend this uplifter. Like that. For the rest, that's the most I could do within this hour. Um, I created a breakdown, build up and drop in the style of Future Wave. I might do a video where I'm going to be finishing some final touches on this track, but I'm not sure yet. So if you would like to see that and see like a mastering process or something like that, let me know in the comments and I will try to cover that. For now, this is what the final result sounds like. Everything has changed tonight. Everything has changed tonight. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram for daily producer content like tips, tricks and more. And for now, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video.